Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and this video is going to be a very quick walkthrough of our natural selection lab that we did in class. And if you recall, we started with 10 different colors of mice. They are all the same species, they just have a variation in fur color, and you can see uh, that what those 10 colors are. And we started with four individuals, and we placed them onto the Christmas paper. This was the Christmas paper, of course, was our environment. The paper circles represented the mice in this environment. We put those 40 individuals onto the paper. And Mother Nature randomly moved them into different directions. The other three people were the Goonie Birds. And remember, they would eat 10 mice one at a time. They would always take the first ones that they saw. And so let's replicate this. The Goonie Birds are out feeding. So let's count the number of survivors. If we did this right, there should be 10. And so we remove the paper, and it looks like we have our 10. And so we can put that into our data table, and we can see that we have a green, a blue, a brown, a white, three reds, and three grays. So notice we've already seen the allele frequencies change. We have no more pinks, oranges, or blacks, or yellows. What was a 10% for every color is now down to zero for some, and it's up to 30 for reds and grays. Remember, in natural selection, the survivors are the ones that can mate, and they produce offspring with the same trait that they have. There was no mice changing colors from one generation to the next, and each mouse reproduced three individuals. So let's show those three individuals. And now we're back to our 40 individuals. We'll put them back on the Christmas paper and let Mother Nature move them around. And now, once again, the Goonie Birds can feed. All right, doesn't look like there's too many left. Hopefully we have 10 left, and there they are. So this is round two. Let's put them, and we can see that we still have 10% green, but we have 20% red, 20% white, and 50% gray. These individuals will each reproduce three offspring. So let's show that. So we're back to 40. We're going to, in our last round, have Mother Nature spread them around, and one more time the Goonie Birds are going to feed. All right, we'll take the paper away, and let's count up how many we have after round three. So we had 20% red, we had 10% white, and 70% gray. So notice how our allele frequencies change, where they all had 10%, now we have 70% gray, to our 10% white to our 20% red. No individuals changed colors during this process. Just because they had an unfavorable variation does not mean that they can simply change the trait that they have in order to have that favorable trait. They're, they either have it or they don't. Those with the favorable trait, in this case the gray for sure, had an increased chance at surviving. Does that mean that all the gray mice survived? Certainly not. Some of them were eaten. But eventually we have seven colors that are gone. Those were unfavorable traits and nature selected against. So that pretty much sums up our natural selection lab. And so that pretty much sums up our natural selection lab.